So, this is our eighth uh, geopolymer camp. Uh, I present my annual state of the geopolymer R&D, that is, uh, what is new in the domain of uh, geopolymer science at large uh, since uh, the last geopolymer camp, 2019, uh, 2015. And the previous uh, geopolymer uh, keynotes have been uh, recorded and are available for free download at our Geopolymer Institute site, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015. And uh, they are really watched. We have a great number of uh, people watching these videos. Uh, I will briefly show you a small example what is the purpose of the geopolymer camp? And I received an email. I would like to know if it is possible to make a presentation at the 8th geopolymer camp of our collaboration with a Russian company, Apple's Core, who created a compact 3D printer for building houses. Together with our Italian colleagues, with whom we got acquainted Thanks to your seventh geopolymer camp, we developed a geopolymer recipe for the needs of the company Apiscore and their printers and would like to share our experience on this. This is the purpose of geopolymer camp, to have people who meet together well, from Italy and Russia. It was not obvious from the beginning. Okay, my state of the geopolymer comprises usually four parts, geopolymer science, geopolymer technologies, geopolymer cement and concrete, and geopolymer and archaeology. This, uh, today, there is no geopolymer and archaeology. It will be on Wednesday morning uh, associated, but I have nothing in my keynote. It comprises three important topics. First, the part three of my campaign against what I consider to be the holdup perpetrated on geopolymer by alkali-activated materials, that is, and the Rudian Committee, why alkali-activated materials are not geopolymer. We put that on videos, and it is very successful on the internet. Part three. What scientists are now writing about this issue? Second point, introduction to 3D printing for t geopolymer technology. And point three, my visit to geopolymer concrete airport and geopolymer concrete building in Austria. First, geopolymer science. My campaign, why alkali activated materials are not geopolymers. And this is the part three. I hope there will not be part four, but it de not depends on me, it depends on the others. We had a webinar, a very successful webinar uh, this April, where I essentially tackled that issue. There have been uh, the registered participants from all over the world who had two very heavy sessions, uh, two days, and uh, uh, the topic was essentially geopolymer cement and why alkali-activated materials are not geopolymers. Uh, uh, the webinar is on video. It is uh, 2 hours 15. Uh, it lasts to 2 hours 15. So it is a very heavy file, but uh, worthwhile to look at. Uh, the problem is that these people from alkali-activated materials uh, are claiming that geopolymers are part of their waste material. No, this is what I am against from the beginning, and uh, this is the continuation of my fight against uh, this crazy idea. Uh, why alkali-activated materials uh, are not geopolymers? Part one is on the internet since 2014, have been watched more than 12,000 times at on our institute site and uh, on YouTube, it is uh, also uh, more than 4,000 times watched for a scientific 
video, uh, it is relatively very high. The part three that we put last year, last uh, uh, October, looks, uh, have been uh, watched more than 4,000 times on the, our institute and uh, on YouTube by more than 1,000 times. So when people are claiming that nobody understands that AAM is not a geopolymer, this is wrong. Uh, so people are now being aware. And I'm receiving a lot of emails claiming, well, now we understand. So, part three, what scientists are now writing about this issue? So it took time for my colleagues to uh, react on the good way, and uh, the reactions are very interesting. Why alkali activity and material are not geopolymers? This is simply because alkali activity and material are not polymers. They are simply precipitates or hydrates. They, call, they cannot be called geopolymers. We have two different systems and they cannot be assimilated. One is not uh, the synonym of the other. It is a big scientific mistake to use both as synonyms. Alkali activation is the wrong terminology for geopolymers. Uh, interesting to show where we were when we started our first conference in 1988 at the University of Compiègne. And uh, what we have now in terms of research, I stopped in 2013, there are now too much. And uh, in fact, uh, the number of uh, laboratories uh, reflected by uh, the number of scientific uh, publications, it is an exponential. I also stopped, it is continuing. Uh, the problem, it is quantity, it is not quality. Uh, that's today uh, very easy to publish anything. Uh, the, the peer review system is no longer working. So uh, we started to look at uh, different ways uh, how we could uh, work, but uh, it is interesting to see uh, this uh, curve, this graph, showing, you see here, 1991, this is my first official scientific paper. There was one publication in the year, and this is the um, most cited paper in geopolymer references. Um, so now, come back to the subject, because of this curve, uh, there has been uh, uh, recently uh, a book published under the title Handbook of Alkali Activated Cement, Mortars and Concrete. And it is interesting to show uh, they presented uh, this type, this curve, which shows the accumulated numbers of articles. So we have the same exponential for geopolymer since, uh, and they put, since they are working on alkali activated materials, uh, their uh, evolution. So they discovered uh, that uh, more and more people were working on geopolymers and no longer on alkali activated material and they reacted. And they created within uh, the RELAM, the RELAM is uh, <clears throat> International Union of Laboratories and Experts in Construction Material Organization. These are essentially Portland cement scientists uh, that uh, are, have been attracted to uh, alkali activity material, and they have created a special committee on alkali activity material uh, to work against the development of geopolymer. And in this introduction, we read the following. Another interesting fact was that uh, two Elsevier BV journals published uh, the majority of alkali activated uh, material related papers in construction and building material has the highest number of geopolymer papers, this is this one, while cement and concrete research was the lead journal for alkali activated papers. Cement and concrete journal should be called Portland Cement and Concrete Research. And I continue with the introduction. Also, it was not until the 21st century that the first technical committee in the area of alkali activation was formed. That is, 
counter reaction against the geopolymer uh, being more and more popular, we have to intervene and we create a special tox force to integrate geopolymer in our system. The RELAM Technical Committee on Alkali Activity and Materials was well, actually initiated in 2007, we have seen that on the graph, and concluded its works in 2012, and the state-of-the-art report was published recently by John Lewis Provis and G. van de Venter in 2013-2014. Fortunately, the participant had the good sense to embrace the alkali activity terminology, even though some had published the majority of their research on geopolymers low calcium activated system. So the problem, as long as uh, geopolymer technology was really not successful in terms of industrialization after uh, people working on geopolymers uh, started to be a little tired of working uh, and they uh, thought that by merging with Portland cement people they will, uh, will help to develop uh, this concept. Wrong. They have been absorbed. And my friends Provis and Deventa uh, published everything on the geopolymer before they switched. They have been converted to alkali activation. This is uh, the report, alkali activity material. I already uh, discussed this report in my part two, a video why alkali activity materials are not geopolymers. I will not develop it here, just brief, very uh, briefly. Uh, it was just mentioned that it is also noted that the term geopolymer is also used by some workers, both academic and commercial, in a much broader sense than this. This is often done for marketing rather than for scientific purposes. So I am using geopolymer terminology because it is good for publicity. This is the way these people are reasoning, so it is defamation. And this is why I am doing this part three and my campaign. Uh, the content of uh, this is in part two of uh, my videos. What do we have? This is Portland chemistry. We start with uh, calcium silicate, hydration, and we end up with so-called calcium disilicate hydrate, CSH, period. To compare with polycondensation with geopolymer chemistry, we see that the systems are totally different. The problem is that these guys who are strongly organized, supported by some big cement company, are for alkali activated materials scientists, they just substitute calcium with sodium and potassium. So in Portland cement, they have the calcium silicate hydrate CSH. And they say, well, for geopolymer, it is very simple. Instead of calcium, we put uh, sodium and aluminum. And we have NASH, natrium, aluminum, silicate hydrate. And we have potassium cash. This is what you find. NASH, cash, CSH. That's the knowledge of these people, and from that they want to understand what is going on. And it is totally wrong. It is really, really low-tech and low-thinking. So, according to Rilem, a geopolymer is a type of alkali alumine hydrate. That is, it is a simple precipitate. It is NASH, it is cash. Nothing else. This is wrong. What scientists are now writing about this issue? There have been recently, in fact last, uh, last week, the International Conference on Durability of Concrete Structures that was held in Shenzhen, China. And one paper dealt with the title is a little misleading, study of the disposition of water in fly ash based geopolymer using at the uh, infrared spectroscope. From Jin Lu Fang from Shenzhen University, and uh, Obakai from the uh, University of New South Wales, from there, Australia. 
uh, from the title you don't expect uh, a lot of information wrong. The first sentence of the abstract is, this paper addresses the question of whether the main product of low calcium fly ash based geopolymer is a hydrate, namely sodium aluminosilicate na hydrate NASH. The answer to this question is important for understanding geopolymer characteristics. Contrary to Davidovich's perception about geopolymer not being an hydrate, some researchers since 2005, these are the Palomo, those who are promoting alcohol activity since this date, have claimed that sodium geopolymer is sodium aluminosilicate hydrate, NASH, together with cash, potassium aluminum, or similar gel. The concepts Nash Cash were widely accepted in the description of geopolymers by Provis and Deventer, adapted by the Rulem AM committee. Davidovich, however, had clearly pointed out that the geopolymer is not a hydrate, and the term Nash is not correct to define an NR geopolymer. Moreover, he called for an effort to be made to stop giving bad definition to geopolymers with non proven facts. So, man, people are awaking and uh, going up to tell and say, look, you guys from Portland Cement, stop. Conclusion. The evidence obtained from infrared, uh, infrared spectroscopy is not adequate to prove the existence of structural water. An assumption that the main product of NR geopolymer is NASH is not favored. This is uh, jargon that is uh, politically correct politically correct, I wouldn't have wrote wrong or false. So geopolymer is not part of the alkali activity and material representation, period. We had in, July, in June 15th this year in uh, Limoges uh, the European Geopolymer Network Conference and uh, Professor Walter Creven from the University of Illinois, a well-known scientist working on application of, for geopolymer, for ceramics, and so forth, made the following statement. Relationship between alkali-activated cement and geopolymers. As a ceramics chemist, she reasoned in different way. She put uh, SiO2, L2O3, inner 2 o ternary diagram, and claimed alkali activity Nash is here, geopolymers is here. Clear difference between the two systems. I received an email. On a separate note, I observed in the last four or five years of learning about geopolymers, mainly from your book, that there is some competition in the research publication world about who gets to define on what is a geopolymer. Although you coined this name in the 70s and make clear the chemical and performance difference between Portland-based alkali-activated materials and geopolymers, very clearly described in the webinars, as you know, some editors and reviewers are exclusively relying on the RULEM Technical Committee definitions of alkali-activated cement and alkali-activated materials. This leads some reviewers to reject papers based on the genuine geopolymer terminology and chemical mechanisms. As such, people wanting to be published eventually end up adapting the recommended terminology. I give this as a feedback. This is a good scientist who wrote to me, and uh, this is the situation which Journals are doing this bad service to science, cement and concrete research. And who are the main editors of this cement and concrete research? Members of the RULEM committee, and essentially GL Provis, who is the associate main editor of that journal. Remember, geopolymer is a polymer chemistry. We have polysilate and the line. It is not a calcium hydrate alternative. I repeat, alkali-activated materials are not polymers. They cannot be called geopolymers. These are two different systems. 
It is a big scientific mistake to use both as synonyms. Alkali activation is a wrong terminology for geopolymers. Since there are polymers, they must have a polymeric terminology. Otherwise, they would not be polymers. And I put uh, this terminology, created the polymer terminology based on the SIL ratio 1 to 1. This is the polysilate, silicon oxo aluminate. Then we have polysilate siloxo, silicon oxo aluminate, and SIO, SIL 2 to 1. SIL 3 to 1, polysilate disiloxo, and the silent link. There have been a book published titled Geopolymers, this is the wrong title, it should have been uh, titled Alkali Activated Material by the same people and they wrote in their introduction these oligomers are named by some uh, geopolymer chemists as silates following the scheme developed by Davidovitz although this terminology is not universally accepted within the research community due in part to confusion with the earlier 1952 use of the same word to refer to the salts of the important biomolecule silic acid that was derived from an ancient Greek word meaning saliva. Wow, what a beautiful scientific uh, definition. The problem that probably continued and very recently, January 2016, there is a geopolymer site on Wikipedia, and he put the same sentence here. These oligomers are named by just some geopolymer chemists as silid, following the scheme developed by Davidovich, although the terminology is not universally accepted within the research community. Universally accepted. I don't understand, uh, but only one or two guys are against uh, the right uh, universally accepted due in part to the confusion with the earlier 1952 use of the same word to refer to the source of the important bullion molecule silic acid. <gasps> what is important is biology, what we are doing in uh, material science is nothing. We may not use the same word. And who is writing this? He is teaching his professor for cementitious material at the University of Sheffield. And he doesn't know that we are basing our geopolymer technology on geology. For more than 500, for more than 100 years, the term silic is found in geology. It designates special rocks, silic metamorphic rocks. That is, we have the oceanic crust is mostly basaltic, that is alkali, alkaline, and the continental crust is mostly silic meaning the rocks, such as granite, contain high amount of aluminium and silicate. This is a logical scientific terminology, 100 years or older. It's not enough. Coal fly ashes are commonly classified into three entities for more than 90 years. We have a class F and class C that came from the US, but in Europe, uh, it was uh, it was calcic fly ash, ferric fly ash, and silic group fly ash. The silic component results from the percent of weight of the ratio SiO2, SiO2 three Tl2, silicon aluminum, silic, silic. This is logic, and this is uh, our science. GL Provis works every day with fly ashes. He published on alkali activated fly ash. And he ignores uh, that uh, the basic uh, knowledge of uh, having coal fly ashes classified in these entities. Is it ignorance or it is disinformation? I cannot believe that uh, from his position as Professor for Semantitious Material, it is ignorance. We have the well-known term Cylon for high temperature refractory material, silicon, aluminum, oxygen, nitrogen, acronym of silicon, aluminum, oxygen, nitrate, the scientific logical terminology. 
The geopolymeric silate proceeds from the same scientific logic. It is the salt of the silicoaluminic acid from the silic rocks. In fact, for geopolymer molecules, we write silic siloxo, silic disiloxo, polysilic, polysilic siloxo, polysilic disiloxo. These are never used in biochemistry. So forget about this comparison and uh, please stop to denigrate geopolymer terminology. What is a geopolymer? It is a ch these are chains or networks of mineral molecules linked with covalent bonds. And so we have several types depending on the, the ratios and uh, the atoms. Polysiloxo, polysilate, polysilate siloxo, silate disiloxo, polyphosphate. Polyphosphate is a geopolymer because it is a polymer. Polyphosphate, phosphosiloxo, and essentially polyphosphoaluminate, and organosiloxo and polysilicon. The silicons are but part of the inorganic polymer chemistry. They are not organic polymers, and they are uh, the, uh, one of the models of uh, geopolymer SIO, SIO uh, system. So, what is a geopolymer? It is not alkali activated compound, it is not alkali activated metacarline, it is not AAFA alkali activated fly ash, it is not alkali activated slag, it is not alkali activated XXX, it is a result from geopolymerization in alkaline or acidic medium. I repeat, geopolymers are high molecular macromolecules, polymers, and I repeat my statement must go in your head, not just for you, but for those on the internet that will look to this video. Alkali activated materials are not polymers. They cannot be called geopolymers. Two different systems. It is a big scientific mistake to use both as synonyms. Alkali activation is a wrong terminology for geopolymers. We have uh, some uh, cement sightings that are calling uh, the geopolymer concrete alkali activated concrete AAC or for fly ash based AAFA or uh, alkali activated fly ash concrete. I received an email claiming, asking for, are there some activators instead of NOH? So, my answer first, there is no geopolymer activator. There is a reagent, we have a reactive or hardener, we are using alkali and acylicates, casilicates, because there is nothing to activate. If we take metacarline, it is super reactive. You just put a drop of NOH, a drop of silicate, and it reacts. It is a chemical reaction. Activation of what? You don't have to, it is not some, uh, it is from the chemical uh, makeup, it is a material that will chemically react with another, not need to be activated. Glass, the fly ash is made of glass that is easy to depolymerize, to be depolymerized. You don't need to activate the fly ash, you have a chemical reaction between the glass and the alkali slurry. Same for slag. So, is actually alkali activation the first step of geopolymerization? I prefer to use the term, a chemical term, alkalination, which represents the chemical mechanism that we are dealing with. We have depolymerization of the silicates, gel formation of oligosilates, polycondensation, Particulation, networking, and geopolymer solidification. Alkalination is a chemical reaction between alkali and other reagents, and it is a well known process in chemistry that goes back to antiquity. Nothing is new here. For many cement scientists, alkalination is alkali activation, which is totally wrong to sum up. First, 
there is no geopolymer activator. Second, there is nothing to activate. All our ingredients are naturally super reactive. This is a regular chemical reaction. I repeat my message. Alkali activated materials are not polymers. They cannot be called geopolymers. You have two different systems. It is a big scientific mistake to use both as synonym. Alkali activation is the wrong terminology for geopolymers. You'll find all the explanations and the book knowledge in my book. So, this has been the first part, and we enter into the second theme, geopolymer technology. We have this afternoon a 3D printing focus session. Uh, this is what we have done here. We use uh, indirect printing uh, with an organic photopolymer mold through the print, and uh, we have a beautiful geopolymer ceramic. Others, uh, issues, others uh, will present and they are bigger, bigger, and bigger, and bigger, and bigger, bigger, bigger instruments uh, to make uh, buildings. So you see, centimeters, two meters, uh, ten meters long. Apisco plans to bring houses using geopolymer futures. Use will be uh, this afternoon. In the reaction of uh, the development of uh, the publications, scientific publication, this exponential curve, if you remember, I entered in contact with the famous publisher Elsevier, and we decided, uh, since uh, we know that the peer review system is no longer working, to introduce a new system. That is to say, we will review those papers that have been peer reviewed on a particular theme. And uh, in May, uh, two months ago, we presented our third, what we call, virtual journal on geopolymer science. Uh, this one was on reinforced geopolymer concrete, a critical review that was published in uh, Materials Today online. And it uh, encompassed uh, two uh, topic. First, uh, geopolymer fiber composite, and second, fibers, fiber reinforced geopolymer. Uh, geopolymer fiber composite, that is, you take a fabric and you impregnate it with a geopolymer matrix. So it is a geopolymer fiber composite for heat and fire resistance. This is a technology that we developed uh, since now 20 years is working perfectly. Uh, this uh, is uh, available on the, our internet. Uh, it uh, shows that the geopolymer, uh, for geopolymer fiber composite made out of carbon and the like is never burning, whereas all the other uh, organic based uh, systems are burning or will uh, flash over after a certain period of time, where a geopolymer will never ignite. There have been then very great improvements. So it is easy to impregnate a fabric, depending on the coarse size of the, uh, your uh, mineral that you are uh, using. But to improve uh, uh, the uh, mechanical strength of a uh, geopolymer, which is from by nature uh, brittle, one has to incorporate a small amount of fibers. And they are very interesting results. For example, this one from a uh, Chinese team, uh, effects of fiber length on mechanical property and fracture behavior of short carbon fiber reinforced geopolymer composites. And uh, they took uh, potassium polycyte geopolymer, this is a metacarline based uh, potassium geopolymer, and introduced very short carbon fibers, 2 mm, 7 mm, 12, and got this. Geopolymer matrix had 15 flexural strength in PR at the beginning, and by just incorporating 2% of the 2 mm carbon short fiber, very, very small, increase to 60 MPA. This is a real drop in mechanical properties, and with a 7 millimeters long fibers, 
you get practically 90 in flex. This is uh, very hard. Uh, the same team is working on uh, introducing graphene. This is a very popular system. Uh, crystallization kinetic on the microstructural evolution of reduced graphene oxide geopolymer composite. Um, homogeneously dispersed graphene reinforced geopolymer castables were easily and simply prepared through in situ reduction of graphene oxide in the alkaline silicate solutions. The in situ graphene oxide reduction occurs at 60 degrees C for 72 hours. The as obtained graphene is universally dispersed and added to metacarline, ultrasonically mixed, and polycondensed. So instead of adding the graphene, which is a very minute, minute, minute system, into a slurry, they are uh, in situ preparing it through chemical reaction. The final, final amorphous geopolymer matrix is of the type polysilide siloxo. The flexural strength at room temperature for the one weight percent graphene, K polysilide siloxo geopolymer is in the range of 10 to 15 MPA. After that is important, heat treatment at 950 degrees C for 30 minutes, the flexural strength reaches 75 MPA. Heat treatment 950, 75 from 10 to 75. Yet this is not stable, it is carbon. It is obvious that at uh, uh, 950 degrees C, this will not long term stable. For longer heat treatment time, the stress decreases. But it is an example what uh, happens when one can add very, very nano size uh, particles that uh, reinforce uh, the mechanical properties of our system. Uh, this is uh, just uh, for uh, ease a uh, little uh, my uh, keynote. Uh, effect of porosity on the absorbed, the emitted and transmitted light of a geopolymer metacolumn based geopolymer. This is a geopolymer that is emitting light. Uh, they included inside crystals, photoluminescent crystals, uh, that is uh, strontium, magnesium, uh, silicon oxide, and eutropion and uh, D, DT, I don't know what, uh, with an average particle of two microns. And uh, the photoluminescent geopolymer after sun exposure shows that those optical properties are real and can be extend, expanded for applications, and it lasts 8 to 12 hours. So you have here a piece of concrete, and here the uh, photoluminescence uh, motor, and this is what you get uh, during the night. So now we come to geopolymer cement and concrete. This is uh, one of the major parts of uh, my presentation. But it is the easiest one because I have uh, several videos. You know, if not, you will uh, learn it, uh, that uh, we had our first geopolymer concrete built in 2013 in Br Brisbane at the University of Queensland, Australia. I visited uh, these buildings, so you have here uh, the geopolymer slabs that are building uh, the floors. This is the video we took about this building last October.
Okay, so this has been the visit to the first building made out of structural concrete, and the same company made airport the year after, and this has been the report of my visit. Okay, so you have seen the results. I guess for those who were not yesterday, those who were yesterday know about this small thing, but for the others, how was it done? With which equipment?
so impressive. Uh, the last one is the, the more recent one. Uh, to do that job, we need uh, chemicals, we need new reactive ingredients, and uh, the Indian chemical company Kiran Global Chems Limited uh, has started a big campaign. Uh, you'll get uh, on Wednesday morning a keynote on that uh, topic. Uh, I'm just presenting uh, their videos that they put on YouTube uh, two months ago. Global warming is the world's most important concern today. Each ton of cement production emits 800 kgs of carbon dioxide, which represents an addition of 7% to the total carbon emission of the world. Due to cement-based concrete's popularity for strength and durability, production will continue to rise and consequently carbon emissions will touch 3.8 billion metric tons by 2030. Under the leadership of our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, India pledged for reduced carbon emission, bringing it to the level of 2005 by adopting green technology. One of the solutions that we can instantly offer to our country is eco-friendly green geo-cement and save 312 million ton carbon emission per annum. For the past decade, Kiran Global Chems Limited, an Indian company with global operations, has been conducting extensive research on green cement and has successfully commercialized geo cement and named it Kiran Global Green Geo Cement. According to Professor Joseph Davidovitz, a French scientist who discovered geopolymer, the use of Kiran Global Green Geo Cement is a revolutionary idea in all aspects. The Kiran Global Geo Binder is a versatile product developed out of extensive research activities for over a decade. Unique combination of ions in Geo Binder facilitate geopolymerization and produce various forms of aluminosilicates, which is a primary constituent of Geo Cements. Kiran Global Geo Binder is a patented product and available in different grades as per the application requirements. With OPC, normal curing requires a minimum of seven days to reach the minimum desired strength. In Geo Cement, the desired strength is reached within a very short span of three days required as per standards. Kiran Global Green Geo Cement Concrete is stronger and certainly more durable than Portland Cement Concrete and is suitable for any application where Portland cement is typically utilized. Kiran Global Green Geo Cement Concrete is one of the world's lowest carbon footprint concretes. To Kiran Global, we are committed to the planet. Let's build our green future today. Kiran Global Green Geo Cement. So, CO2 is an issue. It was always well, in Europe, we no longer talk about it, but in other countries, it is very important. And the CO2 emissions of Portland and of geopolymer has long been discussed in papers. And uh, we had uh, in our uh, journal, virtual journal of geopolymer science, uh, last year, published in June 2018, a review on the environmental application of geopolymers uh, that uh, was partially dedicated to the emissions of CO2 and what has been calculated and publicized. And we discovered that there were false CO2 values published in scientific papers. I had to make my calculation myself. All these scientific papers have been peer-reviewed and contains wrong statements and false calculations, errors, and they were published. So, is an example of what is happening in the scientific world with the uh, publications. Uh, this has been first online on Materials Today from Elsevier um, one year ago. I put uh, uh, I rewrote uh, this article to put it in our. Uh, library at the Geopolymer Institute and uh, it is uh, paper number 24 
available for uh, free downloading. We had numbers publication made by renowned scientific teams, such as this one, published in 2011, Journal of Cleanup Production, an environmental evaluation of geopolymer-based concrete production, reviewing curing current research trends. This is a well-known French team, members of the William Committee. They claim that in terms of CO2 emission, geopolymer cement was not better than Portland cement and worse for other parameters. One of their studies involved a mixed design containing metacarline, MK750, and NA silicate, and because of the high amount of alkali silicate needed in the formulation, they claimed that geopolymer cement emitted twice the amount of Portland cement. This statement was taken for granted by other scientists without any further consideration. First ever, a simple metacarline silicate geopolymer is not a cement. So to calculate the CO2 emission as the uh, uh, um, prototype of geopolymer cement just by mixing a silicate with metacarline is totally wrong. We need to add things to, that to transform it into cement. Addition of slag and so on. This has been my first invention of geopolymer cement. But they are not taking it into account. They said it is a geopolymer cement and they had, uh, end up with very high value. Worse than that. The CO2 emissions and environmental impact calculated in Haber and all paper are wrong and must be roughly divided by 260% too high. They made gross, uh, gross error of calculation in it. So first, the assumptions were wrong, and with this assumption, they completely had gross error. This is the reality, and this paper, this type of paper has been cited, cited by the opposition. I said, look, all right. But they are not alone. There have been others. Um, but I will not focus on the others. I focus on this one, because these are good scientists, and they recently published an update by the Relim Technical Relators, present update of the environmental impact of geopolymer, the release of the new eco invent version 3, these are uh, some standards, pushes to recalculate previous data that were calculated with a too high value for the sodium silicate solution, as Davidovich mentioned in his review. Uh, the updated results with the sodium silicate solution packs divided by nearly by three uh, improve the comparison with cementitious materials. In particular, MK-based geopolymer have now similar as blended cement-based concrete. So they are still, it is still similar instead of being twice. Uh, but they are not taking into account that the geopolymer cement is not this, that since the invention in 1983, we know that we have the metacarline and the potassium silicate, and we have the slag, and we see the evolution first of the metacarline content, because we changed the system to make a cement, and the evolution of potassium silicate that is continuously uh, diminishing. So uh, they are not taking into account what is, what, is doing, what is going on in the real field of applications and commercialization. So they just updated uh, the uh, wrong calculation. So this is, uh, I am grateful for that. And for, uh, there are not uh, a lot of scientists who are doing it. Uh, they updated it, and it is, uh, I, for me, it is a good, I congratulate them for having done that. Um, MK-based uh, geopolymer cement. So this is pure metacarline, and here we have a rock base, that is, we are using naturally material that only contain a lot a lower amount of metacarline in it. Uh, you find all the explanation in my book, chapter 9, here, chapter 10, 2024, or 2012. This is the end of my State of Geopolymer, 2016. Thank you very much.